Don't scoff at your healing wins. Give yourself a healing high five. Mm. Uh, oh, you didn't give me a high five. Man. No. It's hurtful. No. <laughs> I know, it's a little cheesy. I know, Tanner. But so, it's okay to be Tanner's a little cheesy. Tanner's a bit cheesy. I'm a bit cheesy. I like being a little cheesy. <laughs> That's all right. Mm-hmm. It's an important topic we have today. Mm-hmm. Yes, cheesiness of your title aside, <laughs> um, definitely important. And I think one that a lot of people, at least I encounter and talk to, don't do enough of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so to begin, we pose a question. You know, what do you focus on more? Signs you're not healing? Mm. Or signs you are healing. I think most people would probably say signs are not healing. Yes, this Why matters. is that though? Why is that kind of typically where people focus? Well, I think there's research done to show that we're negatively slanted, a lot mm. of us. And when we have nervous system dysregulation, we're just on the lookout for danger. Right. Okay. So that adds to like the, maybe the naturally negatively slanted yeah, that we can be. Yeah. That's, that's how we focus. And I get it. Like I spent a large portion early on in life just scanning for danger. Yeah. This is what my nervous system became attuned to. It's just looking out for danger. So when people are starting this healing process, they're constantly looking for signs of like, am I doing the wrong technique? Right. Am I not focused in the right area? Why are my symptoms not changing? Totally. Like fear-based kind of worry and scanning. Mm -hmm. And there's all these healing wins, and we'll define healing wins in a second, but there's all these healing wins taking place, but they're not even noticing them. No. Or attending to them or showcasing to their brain and nervous system, hey, we're healing. We're making progress. Yeah. We do the opposite. We showcase to our (laughs) brain, you know, my symptoms were worse today. Yes. Yes. You know, I had another pain or symptom flare. Like they constantly get caught on this and I get that. Yeah. But that's not going to help our healing actually progress. Well, and I think it's not uncommon to fall into really black and white thinking sometimes of like healing is this, which is maybe like no symptoms um, or go to the other end. And there's a struggle with being in the middle of noticing progress and maybe wins in the right direction yeah i've heard it talked about as you know let's say someone's symptoms reduce Mm, by 10 percent. yeah the 90 percent that's left now becomes the 100 percent of their symptoms Uh, so they don't see that hey actually you know one tenth of my symptoms went away right they're seeing the opposite well and often it is a slow build to seeing change and so Mm. Um, that's not uncommon to kind of slowly see little bits and bits. But often I think people get stuck on being like, well, my pain is still here or this isn't what I'm expecting or wanting. Yes. Now, cheesiness aside, I do truly mean people people need to give themselves healing high fives. (laughs) (laughs) I believe it because the more you do that, the more your human will actually progress okay, so at a quicker rate. Can I just say it's not like actually a physical like high five I hope here. that people are listening <laughs> right now and just like Stop it. high-fiving themselves. <laughs> Please do that for me. Oh I beg of you people. Uh-huh. <laughs> but truly, like it, it actually can make a difference in how our healing progresses. Mm-hmm. Well, why is it important to maybe acknowledge progress? Is what you mean by the high five. So, because I, I think it motivates us to actually keep going. Yeah. And it helps us understand and not be preoccupied about like we're doing the wrong thing. Uh, it helps us understand like, hey, I am doing the right thing. Yes. It's just going to take time. Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing all these signals, all these signs that I'm actually healing. Yeah, totally. And if the brain, like you said, is so used to not seeing that way, this is a bit of a brain retraining kind of technique. Yeah. Why are you smiling at Tanner? <laughs> I was if imagining. You're watching, you can see him smiling. If was, you're listening, I he's was grinning at me for still imagining reason. people high-fiving themselves. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So let's define what we mean by healing wins. Okay. Healing wins are signs your healing is progressing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to break this down in a second. But what most people think healing wins are, are basically their symptoms are reducing in some way. That's how people classify it. Now, could that be a healing win? It definitely is a healing win. Okay. But it's not the only healing win. 
Okay. And it's not the healing wind that I look for early on no. when I'm working with people. Yes. And that's a really good thing to say because if we're expecting reduction in pain as the healing wind right away, I think yeah. a lot of people are going to be really disappointed because that's not common. Yeah. And actually, like, I, I truly mean this when I'm working with someone, mm-hmm. I don't want them to be in pain or symptoms. No. But in the first handful mm-hmm. of sessions, especially, I'm barely tracking it. Yes. I don't care so much. I'm looking for other signals Mm. that healing winds are taking place. Right. Because here's what will happen with most people. They start to track their symptoms intensely. Mm -hmm. I remember doing this, Mm -hmm. so I relate to this. I was Mm -hmm. tracking them intensely. They're analyzing their symptoms constantly. Okay, so that constant hyper-focus, even in maybe the recovery solution, but still stuck in hyper-focus. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, there's this Mm hyper-vigilance that's taking place. And based on whether they're doing good healing work, Uh, this is really based on if their symptoms are actually reducing. Yes. So they could be doing great healing work. Mm. I'm sure many of the people listening are doing amazing healing work. Yeah. It doesn't mean your symptoms are going to respond right away. No. But if their symptoms aren't responding right away, they move on to the next technique and the next technique, Mm. even though they might have already been doing all the right things. Yeah. Well, and that can really fall into that pressure of trying to get rid of it or fix it away, which is almost the opposite a little bit. Yeah. And then what you see happen, and I relate to this, is you get this wild roller coaster ride Mm. of emotions. Yes. (laughs) Because here's the thing about our healing and... Alan Gordon, creator of pain reprocessing therapy, talks about this a lot. Healing's not linear. No. It's not like this chart where you're at the very top with the highest intensity of symptoms and day by day it's just going to lower more and more and more. No. We think that sometimes, but it's not linear. Well, I, I'm right. And it's some, maybe for like one-off person that it will happen like that, but it's very rare. And so having this understanding that often it can be a slow process this acceptance that is not always linear and also that that's right healing winds can look in all different shapes and forms and it doesn't mean other winds won't come down the road yeah but acknowledging the process along the way yeah you think about it i always explain it to clients like this it's kind of like one of those you know if you watch a stock on a stock market chart mm. oh. it's all over the place it's volatile yes you know if you watch your money day by day yeah you're going to, you know, go, it's just going to be too much because it's going to be up and down and up and down. And right. over time, we want our money to grow and improve. Sounds overwhelming even like listening. Totally. Describe that. Yeah. I've done this with our money. So like, uh, you know, I've, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> I, took, I took the banking app off my phone. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. Hypervigilant Tanner okay. here. Not just around symptoms in my hypervigilant. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. but it's important to know that like some days you're going to be behind. Some days you're going to be ahead. Yeah. It's not going to be linear. Yeah. And so that's why this is not the only healing wind that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, because of this, if people are tracking and analyzing their symptoms intensely, Mm -hmm. they're going to cause a lot of nervous system dysregulation to take place. Yeah. And over time, that's actually going to worsen your symptoms. Well, and and that comes with that kind of idea too, that if you're always watching in this intense way... Um, often the brain will just keep generating symptoms because your mind's yeah. always with the symptoms, thinking about them, and yeah. it's kind of it becomes your world. Yeah. And so this leads us to what should we be basing mm. our healing on? Okay. And we wrote down what some, deserves a, a high five. What deserves a high five? Yeah, See, you did I it. Yeah, I like you it. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I felt like a warm hearted. <laughs> I'm not doing it. At I know the you. End of this, yeah, but. I know. I want you to, but. No. <laughs> It's uh, I feel a little hurt, yeah, but it's okay. I often reject some of Tanner's ideas like this because I just they're just too much. Yeah, too too, too yeah. cheesy for me. <laughs> <laughs> really divulging uh, deep secrets about our relationship. I think people here. can get that just by you know listening to us. Yeah, yeah they know that. Yeah. Sometimes when uh, <laughs> when Anne's stressed, <laughs> I'll get her to like try and like shake or sway with uh, me. <laughs> And look, it's, I am totally for movement in terms of releasing emotion. But when Tanner's like, come sway with me, it like loses its purpose with know, me because I'm just I like, know. oh, go away, Tanner. I'm doing it's, it. You like, it's not, I'm doing it's not it like what we're talking way. about with our clients here. And it's here. funny because you get peer pressured because then our kids will start to do it with me. 
Yeah. And you know? then it's even like, that's not an enjoyable exercise for <laughs> Our me. Our son's like yelling at, <laughs> do it too, mommy. <laughs> like it's just like so. And then so. he like starts screaming at me um, and then I'm in complete dysregulation and I need to like. I know. Go hide. I know. Yeah. I know that that's how it plays out. And I'm sorry. <laughs> But it's just so funny <laughs> when it takes. It's horrible. You know? Anyways, you've gone on this tangent. I don't Doddled. even know where we are. Yeah. Doddling again. Oh, yeah. We're back. Okay. So what should we be basing our healing on? Mm. We wrote down some examples. Yes. Because people are probably wondering, you yes. know, what deserves a high five? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the first one is a healing win can be that you're starting to spend less time in your head. Mm. And you're spending more time in your body or more time kind of out in your life living. Yeah. And I really like this because I think by the time people start connecting with us, they're spending a lot of time in their heads um, and they don't know how to get out of that hyper focus. Yeah. And it's a really hard place to be. And yeah. so that's a huge win noticing, even if it's just a little bit, that you're spending less time there and more time in your body. That's something to be really like yeah. aware of and lean into a bit. It's important yeah. because we can't heal by just staying in our head. No. It's it's not possible. I've, I've never seen someone do it. And so this is a really important thing that I track early on with people mm-hmm. um, and deserves a high five. Okay. I, I won't do this for everyone, I promise. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Second one, mm. approaching life and movement again. I want to say though, approaching life and movement regardless of pain. Yeah. If pain is there or not. And it's going to be there. Mm-hmm. As you widen your world, yeah. I'm sorry to break this to everyone listening, but as you start to do new movements and mm-hmm. as you start to approach life, things mm-hmm. that you've avoided and feared for a long time, yeah. there's going to be some pain. Initially. Yes. Over time though, mm-hmm. and if it's intense, of course, some yeah. strategic avoidance is okay, but I've never seen someone increase their activity mm-hmm. and not have setbacks along the way. Yeah. It's going to come with the territory, and that's kind of the point. We need to learn to respond differently to the symptoms when they're taking place. Yeah, totally. And so this is one of the things that I look for. I'm on the lookout for constantly. <laughs> hey, Tanner, it looks like he's about to give me a high five I, right now. I know. You, you want <laughs> my face or something. <laughs> it's, 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 it's vital. <laughs> Sorry. I got really excited there because it's important. Like approaching life is a vital step in healing. Well, for you, Tanner, like when you started approaching life, do you have an example that comes to mind that was so key for you? Even when I started to spend more time with friends, mm. even going out for dinner, I was scared to do because of like chairs yeah. in my back. Yeah. And starting to do that, I remember the first few times I went out for dinner, there was pain. Yes. But it was widening my world. I was starting to get over the fear that I needed to live such this small kind of isolated life. Yeah. And it actually, as I, my world widened, I became more regulated. Yeah. Not initially, but I did become more regulated over time. I felt more socially engaged with others. And then as a result, over time, pain definitely started to decrease even just because of that. That initial pain. So how did you approach that and not kind of let that, yeah. And, you know, we've talked about condition responses recently. That's what mm. we're talking about here. And, you know, I knew, I knew it was a condition response. I had okay. so much evidence. Yes. I was very fortunate that I was bought in. Yeah. I was like, you know, sitting on this bench at, I'm trying to think of a restaurant, but any restaurant, <laughs> like it's not, it's not damaging my body. Okay. And so, so you I, believed that at that point. Yeah. And I knew by approaching mm. that was going to be healing. And okay. so I did it consistently. Okay. And the win there was not really about your pain no. or lack of pain. It was about your response. Is about you kind of still being in the world with this new idea yeah. about your yeah. symptoms. So widening your world and it could be small things, mm-hmm. small baby steps. When I first started walking again, we're talking two to five minutes at a time. Yeah. That is was in a really vital healing win. Yes. If someone else saw that who knew nothing about chronic pain or symptoms, they'd probably be like, that's nothing. But that was huge yeah. because that process started me in my ability to use my body more fully. Mm. And it was a more important step I took early on yeah. than having some big pain reduction. Right. Okay, where are we? Number three, 
moments you've shifted back to a state of safety and connection. Mm, and that can be moments, literally moments. Yeah, yeah. Moments. You're looking at when you talk about ventral vagal, the ventral vagal system, safety, connection, mm -hmm. ease, lightness, playfulness, can be a little excitement or purposefulness mm -hmm. in there. Moments of that. You know, when I'm talking with people, if someone's been in fight or flight, for the last 10 years. We're yeah. looking for moments. Yeah. We're not looking for, hey, I had a whole day where I just felt safe. I felt connected. I felt socially engaged. That's a, that'd be a huge win. But at first, we're just looking for moments. Mm. Were you able to get there using some of these skills? Right. Because we need our nervous system to move to a rest and digest state of state for us to actually heal mm -hmm. and so all those little moments early on those are key healing wins yeah totally and it shows that's right it shows that that can happen mm -hmm. and often i think we can get stuck in being like well it was only a little bit here and then i had so much pain or so much dysregulation but we need to really kind of savor those moments yeah you know the next one that i talk about is more ability to approach emotions and dysregulation mm -hmm. and maybe more interest in approaching emotions as yeah well. yeah a willingness mm -hmm. you know because openness no one wants to no <laughs> I, I get it but when we understand the connection between emotions and pain which we've talked about yeah. two-part series we recently had yeah if you haven't listened to it go check it out but there's there's an openness to it and there's an ability to handle sitting with it yes because for myself i I get a little bit anxious or a little bit fearful and it would just be so much for me to tolerate. Right. But some of those early wins I had was I could sit with my anxiety a little bit longer. Yeah. I could actually approach and feel and express anger a little bit better than I used to be able to. Okay. And acknowledging that that is important, mm -hmm. that there is shift there, there is growth there. Yeah. I like this next one. Less mm. spiraling or Googling mm. about your symptoms. Can I add something there? Yeah. It's kind of the same as Googling, but maybe less like online chatting about your symptoms with yeah. chat groups. Yeah, the chat groups. Yes. and uh, Not that they're bad. So none of this is bad or wrong, but sometimes it can add to the fixation. Yeah, it can escalate. It can escalate. Um, mm -hmm. I've been there. I remember when I was healing, I... Very briefly, because I knew it, it was just a really toxic, just a few of these kind of like Facebook groups yeah. and things. They were just like uh, fibromyalgia Facebook groups or yeah. chronic pain, like chronic back pain. There was a guys with chronic back pain one. Oh. I was literally on for one day and it was like so incredibly like disheartening. Well, why? And there were just, yeah, there was guys. I remember seeing one one guy write a comment being like, you know, when you have back pain as a man, you're half of a man or like just awful oh, things. Wow. And so we, we want to be really careful online. Yeah. Um, you know, even with my YouTube channel, I monitor it so carefully because mm. I want it to be a safe space. Yeah. So any negative comments blocked. Yeah. That's... Like instantly because like I yeah. want this to be a, a community and, and our upcoming, mm. you know, course, we, we started a new agency that we... Mm -hmm. are announcing now i guess called embody community yeah and communities in the name because we want to build yes. like a a safe space a community where people can actually heal in well and it's something that's interesting to say there we want a bit so these online communities again can be really good yeah. but it's about what is it is it helping you yeah or is it kind of hindering progress and it's something to really think about and look yeah. at and same with us like it, it, we want to build an online community but also even if these communities are healthy are we spending all our time there yeah is there a balance in my like and and, and that's something to really think about too in terms yeah. of like okay is it a part of my life or is it all of my life because again think that hyper focus fixation yeah it's like a weird one where you of course you want to pick communities where you feel supported mm. you feel yeah. Like it's, I, I definitely recommend the mind body one. Yeah. Um, there's lots of great ones out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's important to not be on it too often. Like the one that was around and I think it's still around was yeah. called TMS wiki. Yeah. And they had success stories. Right. And so when I was first healing, like there was no curable, there was no, no. platforms. There was no big YouTube channels at the time. Like this was almost a decade ago. 
but team S Wiki was around. And so every day I just go on and I read two success stories. Yeah. That was it. I didn't spend all my time there. Uh, I did, I think at the time, maybe Alan Gordon had like a little course on there mm. and I did some of that, but it was like, I really reined it in. Well, because- and I remember that for you, Tanner, like that was a big thing for you. And, and so it, it gave you a lot of understandings and support. Yeah. I think the shift with um, kind of that point of like not spiraling or Googling your symptoms anymore is not relying on these things out of fear. Yes. That's the, that's what you want to watch for. Yeah. And instead you're using other techniques or mm. strategies that are actually going to better your chances of healing. Yeah. Like me stopping Googling things yeah. was a huge healing win. Was it hard at first? Oh, it was so hard. I had the urge. Every new sensation that would come up. Yeah. Even after I knew about a mind-body approach, it's like I wanted to Google it. Right. And you you Google like, you know, shocking sensation I feel up and down my leg. Mm, yes. You get some scary results. Totally. And you got to think yeah. the people that are often sharing in these – platforms or on google or Mm. whatever are the people that have like just horrific results and haven't found solutions like that's who goes on and shares so you want to be really careful about that right the information it's rare people are going on and sharing their small healing wins Mm, that's interesting and we need to because yeah you know i think community of healing is important so this kind of leads to one of the next ones of less theory and focusing on symptoms. Mm-hmm. This is something we focus on early on with brain retraining. Yeah. Because that's going to come first, mm-hmm. typically before the symptoms start to reduce. Yeah. And so has the emotional response changed with your with your pain or your symptoms? Mm-hmm. That's key. That needs to shift. And as that shifts, the symptoms will typically follow. Yeah, totally. And even if it shifts for a little bit, even if it's like rewarding that try. So sometimes... We try, but it's it's super hard, but rewarding at least trying to make yeah. that shift is important too. Yeah. Yeah. And the last one, shifting time and attention to important values in your life. Mm. I think this is a real, real sign of healing that I'll see because it means that the preoccupation around your body, around your symptoms is starting to shift. Yeah. And you're actually starting to open up to what are you passionate about? What do you value in life? What What do you want to go out and do? And I think like, sorry to cut you off there, Tanner. I was just thinking like a lot of people are probably listening to that and like wanting that, yeah, wanting to kind of have shift to values, but like just fear they can't get there. Yeah. And you need to foster this a bit. Um, I did a little bit of values work when I was first healing, like writing down, yeah. like, what do I value? What's important to me? Um, and... You know, I I did a little bit of work there, but I also spent time like figuring out, okay, what am I passionate about? Yeah. And I had to figure it out. You know, right now, like we run, well, two companies and I'm very passionate, but that's not where it started. No. When I was first healing in the first year that I was out of pain, a little bit of flares here and there, but there was no more chronic pain. I remember me and uh, my friend at work, we, we decided to write a children's book. Yeah. Our son was about to be born and, <laughs> and it was a weird time in my life. I But I had a lot of fun. Like I did the yeah. art, she wrote it, we never published it. We, <laughs> I, went, I went to my master's shortly after. We still have some of the pictures in our basement mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. But it gave me something. I, I was excited about something. Yeah. I was motivated to do something and the focus shifts. Like there was a focus. Now at points I got a little too preoccupied with it. Oh yeah. But yes. <laughs> it was I was also learning how can I be passionate about something yeah. without becoming dysregulated. Yeah. Well, and I think even if it that seems really far off, just letting yourself kind of maybe daydream a little bit about it, think a little bit about it and and just allow a little bit of hope to be passionate about something that's not pain and symptoms. Yeah. So all of these things we've discussed, Mm -hmm. these are healing wins. Yeah. We want people to really understand that. Yeah. And again, don't just go off your symptoms reducing. No. As a a sign of progress. So we have a little activity we want people to do. Yeah. If you're still listening, we hope you are. (laughs) A little reflection. Spend 10 minutes each day 
<clears throat> and write down what your healing wins are. Mm, okay. And actually write them down. Point form, just write them down. What are your healing wins over the past day? Yes. Because we want to get really good at being on the lookout for them. Totally. And that's the brain retraining. So you're teaching the brain to be looking, to be acknowledging. That's much different than being like critical or frustrated or yeah. that typical loop. Yeah. And this shows your brain and nervous system. Hey, I am in fact healing. Mm. We're moving in the right direction. Yeah. And that gives a little bit of acceptance for, okay, pain might not be exactly shifting where I want it to be, but yeah. I'm noticing this. So it's a really different relationship with the body. Yeah. And if you want, it's optional. Oh, I see. <laughs> you Tanner could, wrote this down. Uh, you could give yourself a healing high five. <laughs> so <laughs> I like it. How would, for people watching this on YouTube, how would well, that You know what you do? <laughs> I, I, I'll play it out. You know, you sit down with your journal or your phone. Oh, write boy. down for uh -huh. 10 minutes your, your healing wins. Right. Write them down. Yeah. And then at the end, you just <laughs> give yourself a, I like it. I think it's important. <laughs> Are you going to do that later tonight? I Am might. I going to observe you doing this at some point this evening? I think Just so. Just when you're sitting I think this is a good idea. I think if I did this every day, I'd probably feel a little bit happier. Yeah. I'm into it. Okay. And every once in a while, maybe you could give me a no. high five? Okay. No. Just <laughs> the healing high five just is, is optional. It's if optional. you're not into it, I, I relate. <laughs> but you know so many listeners did it. Maybe. Totally. And if you did, that's super okay and you, no, you should your no, choice no you need to be proud of these people I am. this is a this is an exciting thing <laughs> i'm just thing. not into that okay we gotta end this thing okay well thank you everyone for listening thanks for listening <laughs> and we'll talk to you next week <laughs> talk to you next week